In this video, we're going to call a Databricks job with parameters that will control the execution of that job using the REST API. And I'm going to show you how to do that step by step. So the first thing we're going to do is collect a couple pieces of information, the workspace ID and an authorization token. And then we're going to create a notebook that takes a parameter. Then we're going to create a job with a task and a parameter. And then we're going to take a look at the API documentation so that we know how to read it. And then we're going to call those APIs with Postman. And hopefully at the end of this, it'll all be clear to you. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look and look for our workspace ID. In this case, my workspace ID is in the Azure portal. If I go open up Azure Databricks, the URL that you use to access the Databricks workspace, that's your workspace ID. So Take that, copy it, and copy it someplace else. The next thing you're going to do is get an access token. So when you click on your user account here and you go to settings, underneath the user settings, under developer, you'll see access tokens. If you click on manage, you can generate a new token. When you generate that token, you're going to get a string that is going to allow you to use that with the REST API. Copy that someplace because we're going to use that in Postman in just a second. Okay, the next step, we're going to create a notebook. That my notebook is called Test Notebook with Widget, and I created a widget called Folder Path, very Pythonic, a lowercase f with a capital P, Folder Path. And then I put a value in here. Um, if you want widgets, just go to Edit, Add Widget, and it will add the widget to your notebook. Now, just to show you that I'm printing that Folder Path out with this default value, Test from Notebook, and when I run all, there, there's Test from Notebook. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a job. If you go to workflow, create job, underneath jobs, I created a job called test job parameters. That's the name of the job. And I added a test, um, and it, a task, pardon me. And in that task, notice that my path is the test notebook with widget. That's this one that we just created. But notice that here, the parameter here says um, test path from a job parameter. Well. Where is it getting this parameter right here? Because I didn't add that. Underneath job parameters, I created a parameter called folder path, the exact name I call I called the widget. So if I use the same name, I can put a parameter value here, just like this. If I edit that, see, test path from job parameter, right? And now I can run the job. And when I run the job, it asks if I want to view the run. Yes, I do. And then when it starts running, it shows me the notebook it's running. And now you can see test path from job parameter. So where this one was from the notebook, this one is from the job parameter with that default that I specified. So again, what I did when I defined the job is I define the task, I define the path of the notebook, and then under a job parameter, if it has the exact same name, this will override the value in the widget. And that's the default. OK, now that you've got that, let's talk a little bit about the REST API. So the REST API, is, um, the documentation is right here. And it's pretty easy once you get to know it. Um, this will list all the jobs. It's a get, and there's no parameters yet you really need to use. You can just leave all the defaults. So if you take your workspace ID and you tack this onto the end of it in Postman, so let's go to Postman now. OK, so here's the job list. That's that API job list, right? You need to worry about authorization. You're going to take that token that you got earlier, and you're going to make it a bear token. In my case, I configured that in the collection, so I don't need to do that again. When I send it, notice you can see that test job parameters right there. Now, if I want to learn more about, that's all my jobs are being listed, right? I, don't, I only have one job, so I only see one in the JSON array, right? So if I go into uh, job get, this is get all the information off of um, a single job. If we go back to the documentation real quick, this is um, get a single job, right? Now there's a parameter that you have to use, a query parameter called job ID. So just to show you kind of how Postman works, if you take your job list and you copy boop, 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 this job ID right here, just do a regular copy, right? When you go into the get single job, Right. If I go to my params, I can just click on this and paste it. See, 
and it just pastes it there. I don't need to have two there, but you get the idea. That just adds it right into the query uh, parameters uh, right here in the URL. So when I send it, now I get the information. Look, here is the task that it's going to be running, right? So what are, what are the tasks? Test job run, right? Test notebook with widget. That's the widget thing. Okay, so now I have more information about that specific job. Now, if I want to run the job without parameters, I can just, again, let's go back to the to the documentation, trigger a new job run, right? So here's the API, job run now, right? What does it take? It takes a job ID. So if I go back to Postman, you'll notice that in my parameters, I have a job ID, right? And I can run this, boop, and it's sent. Okay, now let's go see what happens when I ran it without any parameters. Okay, so I go back to uh, test job parameters, um, I go to my jobs, I see the runs. Okay, here's the running, it's running right now. Okay, let's go click on it. And I just left the defaults alone, but I called it from Postman, and it says test path from job parameter. It picked up the default that it had on the job. Now if I want to override that default, I can do the exact same thing I did before with job ID, whatever, right? But in this case, under body, I have a little bit of JSON here. It's job parameters in a JSON array, folder path, and now I'm saying from body of Postman. So I'm doing this from Postman. I'm overriding that folder path variable. So that folder path parameter is called correctly. The notebook is folder path. So the widget's going to get overridden. I click send. It sends it. I go back and check it. I go check my job runs. I just test job parameters. I see the latest run. I click on it and from body of Postman. So that overrid it. And that, that's how you use the REST API to um, call parameters of a job and get a job running that goes all the way through the notebook. And now all you have to do is just recreate that in whatever web application or, you know, whatever, uh, you know, API that you're creating can just do that exact work and you can call a Databricks job with the correct parameters and it will run. Hopefully that helps you. Thanks. Have a great day.